So Sean, we've both been talking with uh, uh, salespeople and customers uh, these days who have been looking to automate more of their sales sequence and really make their sales sequence a little bit tighter, a little bit more scalable and be able to do more of them and outreach to, to more customers. So I thought it'd be nice to do a quick video on uh, what some common tips and tricks that we've seen uh, work with some of the customers and what they should be doing when they're thinking about automating their sales sequences. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great topic. I, I see lots of, you know, I do lots of calls with salespeople and it's a case that uh, I see a lot of patterns of what people are trying to do and there, there's some great uh, great things that they're trying to do, but sometimes the strategy that they're using to do it is uh, is uh, is uh, could use a little bit of tweaking. Yeah. The yeah. First I mean, thing I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Like uh, I think one of the things that that I've seen is uh, salespeople not knowing when to uh, automate a task or when to like fully automate something, like have the system do the the uh, do the activity. Do you have any tips around that? Yeah. Um, the reality is, is yeah, sales where a salesperson is a person, right? And there's things that a, a person does extremely well that no robot will ever do well. And there's things that a person does, uh, they're not, it's not the best thing that they do. So uh, it's nice to be able to get uh, uh, systems to, to take care of those things that you're not strong at. And I think the, the one part, the one aspect that I think all salespeople are really good at is, uh, is talking, right? So if the automation, or I should say the, the sequence or the process involves, uh, you know, you phoning somebody and talking to them, uh, you, you, you can't automate the call, but uh, you can definitely automate when to call and who you should be calling, uh, et cetera. But uh, uh, definitely there's pieces that, uh, that need to be automated. I was on a, I was on a call the other day when I, mm -hmm. this uh, sales fellow was, he had a fairly sophisticated process himself. And uh, basically, you know, he would uh, be engaged with somebody, he would send them an email, he would automatically schedule a task to go send that person another email and he would schedule another task to send that person an email if that you know uh and these ta those are tasks <laughs> if you're going to schedule something just let it do it and if you schedule the same email after every call then you shouldn't be scheduling it should just happen right the the tools should just make it go right it uh it uh, uh the things that uh the the scheduling as a uh, automation as, as a process uh the things that the salesperson's involvement like if you have to review an email before you send it that's a good one mm -hmm. then uh definitely schedule it uh but let the system schedule it don't if you have to constantly go in and press you know schedule and think about that schedule happening that can be automated, right? That's yeah. the same decision you're thinking about every single time you look at a, a contact in a, sp a specific state. Yeah, I th yeah, I think when when you're starting to see that you're sending, you're copying and pasting the same email, you're using a template inside Gmail, and that's and you never change it. Ninety five percent of the time, it just goes out. That's a good candidate to just automate and just not have to worry about because. Uh, again, these automations can be made to be pretty smart and they can just do it for you. Better consistency, yeah. one less thing uh, on your plate. Actually, I think you were talking about, uh, you know, it's not just that you schedule the task and, oh, I got to send that email. Now you got to crack it open. Is this the right time for me to send this email? I, uh, what's their, what's their uh, daughter's name? I want to like personalize this a little bit. Uh, and then you have to get into this mind space of the deal just to do, just to send a stupid email, right? Like, and if any time you crack open a deal and you got to start thinking about it, you're spending t cycles thinking about it, getting refamiliarized with it, just to do a task that you weren't really going to change that much anyways. So you might as well automate it so that you can spend more of your mind space, more of your thinking time on the deals where uh, you're actually going to change your strategy on how you deal with the customer. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, uh, uh, when we're doing sales, uh, the whole, process of sales is to uh, move it's uh, move the prospect through the buyer journey right it's uh, uh, you know the worst case scenario and uh, is, is a continuation where mm. I put effort in and nothing has changed right so uh, it's a case that uh, if we uh, have that 
mindset, definitely there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, people further along the deal that I really need to give some special care to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my emails are going to be personalized, this type of stuff, but higher funnel. Yeah. If you're, it's, it's really the case that we, uh, uh, stop wasting all of our mind space on just meaningless things. Right. Yeah. The the whole act of scheduling can be automated even. Yeah. Even, even bottom of the funnel. When you you think about, uh, okay, salesperson made the sale, uh, one week after time to send them, time to send them a follow-up time to say, Hey, how's it going so far? Did we get the thing done? Did, how are we doing? Maybe ask them to uh, fill in a, a survey to see how customer service has been executing on the project. Like these are the things that uh, the salespeople can, salespeople can use it to upsell uh, to get that customer onto the next package. But more, more importantly, like customer service needs that stuff yeah. too. They need, they need the, the feedback on, on how that thing went and they, uh, to send it from the salesperson is probably the right thing because they built that relationship up until uh, now. Uh, so it's probably best for them to re-engage and, and try to get that feedback as well. Yeah, another thing that I, and I see some uh, very sophisticated uh, cadences where people say, okay, my, my intent, you know, all of it always starts with an intent. I need to get this prospect to do something, right? Mm-hmm. And that something is, is, uh, is the goal of the, uh, of, of the cadence, so to speak. So is it to get the person to, uh, at the next stage of the buyer journey is to uh, book, a, book a meeting with finance or book a meeting with uh, some uh, sales engineer internally. There's, there's always the next step. Right. So if you have a cadence to try to get this person to do this, uh, it's interesting. I see people, they'll load up a pilot, power, you know, a power dialer list. And it's a, and I think I talked about this in a previous, uh, previous uh, uh, discussion was they'll have the people in day one. And then basically, if I have to drop a voicemail, let the automation try to get them to know that I'm going to call again and uh, uh, then push them into another list, do all my calls for the other list, et cetera. But the one thing I see quite often is uh, people not changing it. It's like, okay, I'm, I do a voice, I, I drop a voicemail, I send an email. Okay, day three, or I'm going to uh, try to call again. I don't get a hold of them, drop a voicemail, the automation sends an email. It's this uh, definition of uh, uh, of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same uh, a different result, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I say mix it up, right? Uh, do the call, drop the voicemail. That's that's what you're going to do as a as a sales rep. Yeah. Uh, first time, send an email, and then uh, second time, you know, if you get a call and they're not there and they're not booking the meeting like you've asked them to do, automate an SMS next, right? Is uh, try doing something different and then or maybe it's a case that yeah try to change the chat not just what you're saying but change the channel too so that uh you know uh, some people they they they're tied to their sms and they're not tied to email because they get too many emails so uh, exactly is is what i'm saying yeah i think that something that happens there as well i'll just uh, share my screen here just to show an example of uh uh of what we've built to do to do this kind of thing but um I, I like the the recall that you get as well. You think about like marketing and trying to t- uh, uh, hit a contact on as many channels as possible. Uh, your recall rate when you've called someone, emailed them, texted them, and now you reach out on LinkedIn is very good. Sometimes what you can get is someone saying, man, I've heard that name somewhere when actually all you've Just done is tried to call them, email them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that Seinfeld episode. Uh, but uh, it's really good for, for that perspective as well. So I think mixing it up a little bit is really good. And it shows a persistence without being annoying and without just spamming someone over and over again on the same channel. So with this example that I'm showing right now, uh, it's called the attack dog sequence. It's got a, I love the name though. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, the first step is to wait until a Monday, make a call. Uh, and then go to next step. And then the call here, we can even put like the phone script so that if there's something that we want to consistently say in this in the start. And again, some some sales groups have this process nailed down. They know what the right words are and they've put the time in to think about it and test it with their customers and they know it. Some of them don't and then maybe they'll just have like a general idea, pitch this or pitch this to product kind of a thing. But even that, like upping the consistency, upping the... Uh, uh, quality of calls is uh, is something that can be done and can be put into the details on calls like this, right? Uh, so this one goes into call, then we go on to step two, and we automatically send an email. Again, if that email is going to be the same every time, 
the system is going to send the email on behalf of the contact manager and send it for them. Uh, and then we're going to remind our salesperson to uh, add the person on LinkedIn because that's something that we can do. We could put a, a, a suggested content, suggested message in here or whatever we might need to do. And on to step three and a call and on to step four and a call and a social media and on to step five and an email and a social media. So this has got a, a, a good mix of different channels that we're using to, uh, to reach out to prospects. And I think that a lot of salespeople would, st some, some salespeople would see this and say, wow, that's, that's like an incredible amount of detail and incredible amount of steps. And some salespeople would say, is that it? <laughs> so for them, they'd probably build onto this thing. They probably have like a, a yeah. 10 or a 12 step program. You know, it, it really depends on the value of the sale, the number of contacts you're reaching out to and uh, uh, how many touch points you need to make to, uh, to score that sale. Yeah. And another, another, um, uh, optimization on this is also think of, uh, as, as of time, right? If you're always, if your, your cadence is always going to be do something on Monday, uh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to get whatever, you know, one is maybe that they're always busy on Mondays, right. And that's why they're not responding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if it's a case that you can say, okay, my first follow up is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to phone on Monday, my email is going to come up uh, right after that, my next uh, action, whatever the channel is going to be, uh, uh, maybe it's going to be on Tuesday at a different time. So if you mix up the, the time sequence, it's mm -hmm. a case that uh, uh, you might also get, you know, the person's rhythm, uh, uh, you know, you might have a better chance of, uh, of catching of getting, them at their uh, desk. Yeah. Yeah. And, the thing is, is that uh, like with uh, with uh, our product, Funnel Flare, it it watches everything that the prospect does and uses the person's uh, 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 activities. Uh, they're not the salesperson's, but the prospect's activities mm -hmm. to 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 break, predict when the the uh, the email or the text or something should go out. So uh, use the data if you've got it. If not, vary it so you can get try to get the person to respond and uh, give you some data points to understand when is the next uh, the right time to connect with this person. Definitely, and it'll also tell you which channels to uh, to hit them on as well because we all know those prospects. Some of them are phone people. Some of them are nope. Send it to me on an email, and for some of them you got to reach out on social and, and send them that personal message before you get through. So uh, getting the data in front of you is, is, is a really great way to make sure that you're using the right channel with the right person. Yeah. And that, that diagram you, you put up, uh, it, you know, it looked a little bit complicated, uh, but, but the reality is, is that, you know, even if it's just a, a one step or two step process and it's just mm -hmm. over and over uh, the time you're going to save from, you know, doing all of that stuff manually, put it into thinking of optimizing the, the, the process. And, you know, maybe next week or two weeks later when you have a bit of time to reflect is, uh, ah, you know, maybe I should put a, a, a social post there or put an SMS message in there. Uh, uh, and at the end of the day though, is that once it's written uh, in, 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 the, in the workflow, that work is done and it's, you're, it's going to be working for you, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, that's yeah. going to be nice and consistent. I think one of the things you mentioned there, just I think a lot of sales groups don't think about their sales sequence often enough, uh, and they let their salespeople just kind of do whatever is successful for them. And it's uh, uh, it's probably a dozen blind people wandering around and one person who's actually figured it out just doing their own thing. And really what you should be doing as a sales manager or as a, a leader in sales is find out, Who's got the best stuff? Now everyone's going to do that. Everyone's going to do the best thing, and we're going to codify it by putting it in this system. And then yeah. the system's going to help uh, uh, our salespeople and help uh, raise all boats, raise all boats by bringing everyone up yeah. to that to that level by using the the best battle hardened sales stuff that uh, that you found inside the organization. Like, uh, have you even asked? Oh, should we? Do we reach out on social? Maybe we should. Maybe we should try that. And let's log and see if it works. And I mean, and sometimes doing those those cheap and cheerful experiments are where you find really great converting stuff that uh, that really works for the company. Yeah, another, and it's just basic, I guess, uh, sales management is, uh, you know, sometimes like, you know, when I, I would, uh, in, when I was running sales, I would uh, 
sit for a day with one sales rep just to sort of watch what his day is, not to nitpick him, but to coach him, mm -hmm. right? And the thing I'm looking for is, uh, you know, uh, what are the time burglars, right? Mm. What's, what's uh, taking this person's time that they're just wasting time over and over again and uh, then coming up with a, something that would automate it, right? Because it's the time bur burglars that take the money. It isn't just Seymour's. It's the things that you're doing on a daily basis that uh, just aren't generating money, right? So uh, automate them. Come up with concepts that you can actually re uh, use the, auto the tools to do it for you. Yeah, clarify job roles, automate, and... Uh make sure that they're spending the most time possible doing the most effective things that they can be doing.